Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam. Hello everybody, this is Zerakis, and today I am here to do a interesting video here. So, this is a video based on some apologetics videos that I watch. I watch a lot of apologetics and information videos and philosophy videos. Uh, just because I like to learn, I like to think about philosophy a lot. That was actually one of my majors in college. So, one of the things that comes up when uh, you listen to apologetics is there's a, a, a question that is posed to Christians sometimes called the Euthyphro Dilemma. And the uh, Euthyphro Dilemma is basically the, the question of is goodness, or is there a good, a standard of good that is defined by itself, or does God define it? Uh, this is a, to me, this is a strange question. I, like I said, I majored in philosophy, which I would totally suggest if somebody uh, is going to college at this point, take some logic classes, take some philosophy classes, especially philosophy of ethics. That was a really wonderful class, my favorite class of all. And, uh, yeah, read up on good philosophers such as Plato. Plato is a wonderful philosopher. Uh, he was so close to the truth, uh, in my opinion. Anyway, so this is the question. You can see it right up here. It says, is goodness defined by itself, or does God define it? Now, to give you some context, this uh, question comes from Euthyphro. Euthyphro is a story that is told by Plato about Socrates and another person named Euthyphro in Greece. And they come up with a dilemma that, kind of, that Euthyphro has to now answer and figure out, okay, what's true about this? Do I need to make any changes? Or is what I said true or is what I said false? And what do I need to do about it? So, um, in short, if you understand what this question is about, then you'll see my answer right here in short is yes to both. But what I should first preface with is this is out of context. Now that's a normal, most atheists would probably say, or most anybody who is uh, debating a Christian would probably say, well, that's just a cop-out uh, phrase, that's just a cop-out uh, allegation, uh, whatever defense that you have, like that, the phrase out of context, that's just a cop out. You just say that. Well, the thing is, is context is key. Context is everything. If you don't have context, you don't understand what things are, uh, such as this symbol that I write here. Uh, if you don't have any context, you don't really understand what this symbol is about. Uh, same thing like if you never read Harry Potter and somebody makes a reference of Harry found the Philosopher's Stone. Well, if you don't have the context, you have no idea what a person is talking about. So, to me, context is everything. And this question right here is out of context. And this is what I mean by out of context. Uh, Socrates was in a polytheist world. Now, polytheism is the belief that there are several different gods throughout the world, uh, several different deities that have control over certain domains and interact with the world in certain ways. Uh, Greek and Roman mythology are basically that. They believe in a pantheon of deities 
these are the deities that help run the world. These are the deities that interact with the world in certain ways. Uh, one of the stories that definitely pertains to this time, since it's winter, is the story of Hades stealing Persephone away and, Steph and Persephone's mother becoming so distraught that winter happens in the world because her mother is the controls the domain of nature and so when she's happy then spring is upon us and crops grow and stuff like that and then when she's sad winter is upon the world and so that's a very huge that's a mythology that explains like how the deities interact with the world Christianity is very much of a monotheistic religion, meaning there is only one deity that created all the world and has dominion over all the world and over every single domain in the world. So this is a very different idea than polytheistic uh, uh, religions. So here's what I'll go through with youth pro so we'll just do you and sock and this is going to basically shortly say what happened in the youth pro in the youth pro question in order to do this so youth pro is going to court and he meets socrates and socrates explains why he's there and he asks Euthyphro, hey, why are you coming to court here? Surely you don't want to interact with these people. And Euthyphro goes, oh, well, I'm going to go basically have the court arrest my father because he killed a person. And so Socrates goes, oh, well, how do you know that that's a good action to do? Some people would say that that's not a good action to do. There is a, a cultural rule of you don't, basically, you don't tell on your family. You don't compromise your family in any way, shape, or form. So Euthyphro says, my action is, if I could spell, Euthyphro says, my action is pious. I am doing the right thing. And Socrates questions that and goes, okay, how do you know what you're doing is pious? Again, there are other things that are going to, other people that will say that your action isn't pious. So then Euthyphro says, I know. So then Euthyphro answers, saying, I know what is pious. And so Socrates answers again, or questions him again, and says, How do you know what is pious? So, pretty much he goes, Well, how do you know what is pious? There's so many... What standard... defines piety. Question mark. So, Euthyphro answers this question of what standard defines piety? You, Socrates says, okay, there's all these actions that could be pious. What is the common ground or common things that we know of these actions? What is a standard of those common grounds to where we can say this action is pious, this action is pious? Because what he goes through is... Uh, And, or, because he goes through the things of, well, 
if we have a discussion about the weight of something, what do we do? We go to a scale and we weigh it. And then our discussion is over because the scale will tell us how much the thing weighs. If we have a discussion about how wide something is or a particular measurement, what do we do? We go to a ruler, we measure it, and then that will decide for us and end our discussion and tell us exactly what we're going for. Basically saying, if we have a question about certain things, especially in regards to the physical world, we just go to the standard of measurement that we use in order to solve our discussion. But what are things that are hard to measure, difficult to measure, that humans constantly fight about? So he gives a few examples of beauty, uh, evil, good, and piety. So beauty, evil, good, and piety, and he kind of names several others, are things that humans constantly fight about. About what is the standard, what is the best way to go about that, what is beauty, does beauty have a standard, what is considered beautiful and what is not considered beautiful. And then we have what is evil, what is good, what is pious, and so when he asks for the standard, Euthyphro's answer is what pleases the gods. What pleases the gods is the standard for piety. Now understand this. They live in a polytheistic world. So when he sa when Euthyphro says what pleases the gods, like he means what pleases all of the gods. And he believes that the action that he is doing is pious because Zeus did a similar action. And so then Socrates says, okay, well, here are the things that men and women fight about amongst each other. Do the deities fight about these things as well? And Euthyphro had to say yes when they thought about it. Because... Zeus might say that Euthyphro's action is pious, but another deity will go over and say, no, 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 what he's doing is wrong. Um, Hades, in the story with Persephone, thought it was good to steal Persephone and basically force her to marry him. Obviously, Persephone's mother did not agree with that and believed that what Hades did was wrong. And then you have a bunch of other mythologies about what's going on. I think one of the one of the other ones is the Clash of the Titans kind of story. And that one you have a battle between Zeus and I believe his wife. I want to say Jupiter because I kind of forget her name. I think it's Hera. Zeus and Hera. Hera favors this one boy. And so gives him everything that he needs to complete his quests. And Zeus does everything that he can to try and put in obstacles and keep the boy from completing his quests and saving the queen's the the king's daughter from the kraken and so uh yeah you can you have these every single deity fights about what they believe is right or wrong and so socrates rightly asks well how can we say that what pleases the gods is a, is a good enough standard? Because what Zeus thinks is pious, Hera doesn't agree. Hades doesn't agree. What Hades believes is pious, Hera and Zeus don't agree. And so you have uh, this tension between all the deities, and they fight about the same things that humans fight about, because things like beauty, evil, good, piety, justice... Those are things that are really hard to define. They don't have a standard measurement that we can just go to and say, okay, that's the standard measurement. Our thing is solved. We don't have a ruler or a weight set that we could go to for those things and say, this solves our problem. Well, we don't have that standard. 
And so we fight about this all the time, and the deities do the same. So this is the context of the Euthyphro dilemma. It's in a polytheistic world, and it comes from Euthyphro saying what pleases the gods is the definition for piety, and Socrates says, is that really a good definition? Because they all differ on one thing. They eventually, in their discussion, come to a conclusion, or actually uh, come to the question of, is piety defined by itself, or do the deities define piety? Because Socrates... This is what Socrates is looking for. The perfect form. Socrates is looking for what he calls the perfect form in everything. Everything has a perfect form, such as there is a perfect chair, the idea of a perfect chair, the form of a perfect chair, and everybody who makes chairs is revealed certain aspects of that chair or certain aspects of a chair, so that they can build a chair, but it's not the perfect form of a chair. So that's kind of a materialistic way of looking at it. But he also brings it into the realm of uh, basically metaphysics, which is things like beauty, evil, good, piety, things that are obviously exist, but don't have a physical thing attached to them. And so Socrates believed, Plato also believed that there is a perfect form of beauty, perfect form of evil and good and piety and all those things. And so he asked, so Socrates asked the question, is piety defined by itself or is it be defined by the deities? Which was a really good question because he was searching for the perfect form and he understood that in a polytheistic world, the deities can't agree on what is pious, so there's no perfect form, there's no perfect standard of piety, because if the deities define it, they're all going to have differing opinions. This is where I say that the question to Christians, in particular, of is goodness defined by itself, or does God define it, is out of context, because they're trying to take a polytheistic uh, a commentary on the polytheistic world and trying to apply it to a monotheistic world. And so this is where my question, my answer goes yes to both. Because if we have a single deity, and they create everything... and create standards and they're consistent I believe this actually solves Socrates' issue because Socrates' comment on polytheism was the deities can't define piety because they all disagree. But if Socrates was introduced to a monotheistic uh, religion where there's one God that created all the earth and created all the standards for what is pious, what is beauty, um, all the standards for science, logic, philosophy, everything, those perfect forms that Socrates is looking for, then it fits. Then the God, the monotheistic God, has created all those perfect forms because they created the world and they created all the standards in the world. And if that God is a consistent God who doesn't change his mind willy-nilly and, and sticks with whatever he commands, then that solves Socrates' problem. There is now a perfect form, a perfect consistent form, a perfect consistent standard that 
is revealed to in pieces to everybody, which is what Socrates and Plato believed. Now, the reason why I say yes to both in this is because I believe in a monotheistic world where God is the one who defined everything. God is the one who defined a standard of goodness. I mean, the basic uh, Ten Commandments is basically it. So when we... So if you look at the Ten Commandments and we just, just look at the social laws, the ones that pertain to society, such as do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness to your neighbor in court, um, which is also another way of saying, like, don't lie, but, like, in a specific instance. We can all agree that those are wrong. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of the drama in life is people committing adultery. We all agree in some way that adultery is wrong. It causes problems. We can all agree that murder is wrong because you're killing a human being and that causes problems in society. And we can all agree that stealing is wrong because you're stealing somebody's livelihood and you're causing problems. Not you, but the person doing that is causing problems. So we can all kind of, we can all agree that the Ten Commandments does set a good standard of society. And so God created this standard. God created the standard for what is good, what is pious, what is evil, what is beautiful. And so all these perfect forms that Socrates is looking for has been defined by God. Now, I say both because, to me, goodness exists in and of itself as well. Because God created goodness, goodness exists. And even people who don't believe in God can still know what the standard of goodness is and still know what is good based on a standard. And they don't even have to believe in God. But they could come to that revelation they can come to that knowledge of what is goodness and know that there is a standard to it. They can find that perfect form even without God. But it is also defined by God because God is the one who created goodness and set a standard for it. So, yeah, I think that pretty much ends everything. So, to wrap it all up, this question given to Christians, is out of context because the context of the Euthyphro discussion with Socrates and Euthyphro is within a polytheistic world, and Socrates is searching for the perfect form of piety in which all the gods can't define it because they all differ on what is pious. So having a single deity who created everything, created all the standards, and is consistent, solves all of Socrates' problems that he has with the polytheistic world. And so, in the Christian answer, I would say the Christian answer is yes to both. Goodness exists in and of itself. Even if you don't believe in God, you can find the standard of goodness. God is also the one who defined that standard because he created all the world and made all the standards. So that is pretty much my whole spiel about this. So I would like to know, what do you guys think about this? Do you think that my idea of a monotheistic deity solves Socrates' problems? Do you think that I'm right in saying that this question is out of context? Do you believe my answer would be a good answer to this question or do you think there would be better and different answers? So let me know what you guys think. Go ahead and make comments down below. If you like what you see, please uh, like and subscribe and spread the videos out. Um, I'm not really doing this for any financial support, but I do want to teach people what is true. Or I believe what is true. I believe what I'm teaching is true. I have some pretty different ideas on Christianity and how to present it and stuff like that. And 
I come, I'd like to talk about philosophy and stuff like that. So if you like my content, please spread it around because I think it would be pretty good if a lot of people learned about this. Anyway, hope you guys are doing well. I uh, hope you have a good day and I will see you next time.